Welcome back to the Knife Studio. Today I'm working on a 15 inch buoy with a plain carbon blade that's gonna have a 600 grit satin finish. The handle is gonna be old growth redwood burl that's dyed and stabilized to a beautiful like deep blue color. This knife's gonna be a takedown with stainless steel fittings that just have a subtle bit of embellishment on them. So we thought we'd bring you guys along as we work on this course and you'll be able to see a little bit of the process I'm gonna go through. I like to start most of my knife builds with a good sketch and this one's coming out great. Now that we've got the sketch out of the way, we can move on to actual fun, moving some hot metal with a hammer. Almost all the knives I've done over the last two years or so were really fancy mosaic Damascus patterns. And with those, you can't really forge out the blade shape as much as you can with a plain carbon blade because it'll distort the pattern too much. So it was really nice just getting back to my roots and forging out a plain carbon blade just a hammer, hot metal, and the anvil. Got the general blade shape forged out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off that bar stock and start working on the tang. Ever since my dad and I built the hydraulic press about 10 years ago, I've been forging all my tangs with that. And I'd actually forgotten how much work it can be to move all that metal with a hammer. I got it drawn out though, it just took me a few heats and uh, more than a couple drops of sweat. You can see me checking the straightness of the blade like 150 million times it felt like. It takes me a while to get them straight but it's really important at this stage because if you don't get a good straight blade, you might not have enough material there to grind it straight later. For normalizing, I heat the blade to 1600, let it air cool, and then 15 air cool, 14 air cool. Now we can clean up the profile of the blade on the grinder. And there's quite a few of my big tools that we're not gonna use on this project, just so it can resonate with more people that wanna buy the course. And to show you really don't need some of those things, they just make life easier. One of those tools we're not using is the surface grinder. So I'm gonna be cleaning up the Ricasso area on the two x 72, and that's kind of different than what I'm used to because I've been using the surface grinder for so long. Some of the larger and more expensive tools that we're not gonna use for this coarse buoy build are the surface grinder. We're not gonna use the heat treating oven, the milling machine, the hydraulic press, and we won't be using any of my high-end engraving equipment. So I heat up the forge to approximately 1500 degrees, and then I stick the blade inside of a metal pipe, and that just helps protect the blade from direct flame from inside the forge. Quench it in Parks 50 at room temperature, this is a 1084 blade, by the way. Test to make sure it's nice and hard. It had a pretty thick layer of decarb from heat treating in the forge, but it got really good and hard. I'm using the tempering oven only to temper, but as long as you have an oven that'll go up to 425, you can use that instead. The blade had a pretty bad warp in it, so I needed to straighten it out, and I used some heat up on the spine and then pull the blade over in whichever direction it needs to go and then cool it off, and it seems to work really well for me. Make sure you don't get those heat colors down into the blade edge, though. You could over temper the edge of the blade. It wasn't quite straight yet, so I had to put it back in the vise and keep working it. After several attempts, I finally got it nice and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little taper on the tang so there's less material in the way for when I have to disc sand the Ricasso flat areas next. Copy break. The disc sander is an amazing tool, especially if you don't have a surface grinder. I actually didn't get a disc sander until about a year ago and I can't believe I lived so long without one. I'm scribing some lines for the center of the blade 
to give me a good reference to where I need to stop my grind. We're gonna leave the edge of the blade about 30 to 40 thousandths of an inch thick and then a little thicker at the tip because I like some extra meat out there just to add a little more support. I'm going over the blade with a Sharpie just so I can see the previous grit scratch marks as I go for finer and finer grits. We're on a 120 grit belt here and I'm going to take this blade up to 320 grit before we start hand sanding. These new sharpie marks are so I can see how far up the convex edge goes up the flat bevel. The way I get the convex edge is by using the slack belt up on the top of the grinder. The slack belt is where there's no backer behind it so the belt can have a little pressure on it and make a little bit of a radius on the edge. And the green tape you're seeing is to keep the belt from digging into the spine of the blade. I want to go ahead and performance test the blade next. So I need to get it sharpened up and ready for some heavy chopping. I'm using the coarse side of the stone to get the edge started and then the fine stone to refine it. Now I like a real aggressive edge and I get that by using the stone and then doing some stroping on a rod. The first test I do is a brass rod test where I run the edge over the brass rod and see if the edge flexes over it without chipping. And you also want to make sure the edge doesn't stay bent over because that means it's too soft in that case. And then I chop through a couple two by fours, knots and all. After the two by four chopping, the entire edge is still shaving sharp. It's time to get rid of the edge so I don't cut myself while I'm working on the knife from here out. Now we can move to the final grinding and clean up the plunge cuts. So I put a file guide on here so I can get some nice, perfectly parallel lines. Then I use a special jig I made over on the grinder to clean up the plunge cuts and get a perfect symmetrical radius on both sides. It's not so much a jig as it is just a different type of platen that the belt goes over the top of. The edge of the platen has a small radius on it and you can run a J-Flex belt over that radius on a slow speed and grind your plunges to be exactly the same. I also clean up the convex edge part of the blade by lightly tipping the blade up to match the radius of the convex edge. Do a little bit of disc sanding on the blade bevels to clean them up and flatten them out. And then back to my special platen with a 320 grit belt this time. The one we had on there earlier was a uh, 120 grit belt. This will leave the blade in a state that's ready for 320 grit sandpaper which is really nice because I used to have to start with 220 grit. I spend a little more time grinding these days and less time hand sanding, which is really nice. First area I like to hand sand is right up there in that plunge cut area. That's one of the hardest and most difficult areas and you can easily get little divots and stuff in there. So I like to get that out of the way before I move on to the big open area of the blade. I had to use a little 220 grit on the very tip of the blade just because there were some 120 grit scratches in there still. But other than that, I was able to sand the rest of the blade starting out with 320 grit. Need to clean up the spine of the blade next. I wanna make sure it's nice and square with the blade, so I'm holding the square on the Ricasso. Turns out it wasn't, so I need to adjust the disc sander a little bit. 
I put the black mark on there so you could really see where the disc sander is hitting and make sure that I'm getting it square. Now it's square after a little adjustment on the disc sander. It's really nice when you have a good foundation laid for yourself. Because I spent all that time getting the spine of the blade nice and square, it makes some things down the road easier, like marking out the bottom of the ricasso. All I have to do is lay it on the granite and it sits nice and square and I'm able to scribe lines across there now. I have those nice scribe lines that I can grind to now on the bottom of the ricasso. I can also start working that choil area where the ricasso transitions into the blade edge. You can see that nice little bit of radius from the plunge cut extending right down the choil, and I love that. The bottom of the ricasso, the spine of the blade, and the choil area are all ready for some hand sanding now. You want to keep your sandpaper nice and flat. If you don't keep your paper flat enough, you kind of wash out the corner and it won't be as defined as it could have been. Clips like this can be really difficult to grind. There's a couple different reasons. One is that they have a compound angle. As I grind down the clip, I have to slightly curve the blade and change the angle, like a picture of barrel roll. The other reason is because the clip has a radius to it. And that radius makes it so I can't just grind flat on the belt. I actually have to use the corner of the belt to grind almost the whole clip. And that just adds a little level of difficulty that you wouldn't have like with a straight clip. I want to spend most of my time on the grinder with the clip and do a minimal amount of hand sanding because that hand sanding always has a tendency of washing out your lines and rounding over your corners. And I want that crisp line on the clip to be as sharp and well defined as possible. I'm putting a little mark on the spine of the blade where the clip ends, and then I can see visually if they line up properly. In this case, they didn't, so I need to go in and just do a little bit of hand sanding just to extend that line to where they line up on both sides perfectly. It's time to get the file guard back on the blade so we can start getting the Ricasso ready for the guard fit later on. I like to relieve the sides of my tang just a little bit. We're talking five to maybe 15 thousandths of an inch. And then I can move on to working the top and bottom part of the Ricasso. This is one of those things that I normally do on the milling machine. But again, for the course, I'm doing it by hand here just to show that you can do it without the milling machine. Need to go in with the grinder and get that tang tapered just right. Especially up there where that relief was around the ricasso, there was a little bit of grinding to do there just to make sure the taper continued from the ricasso all the way down the tang. I start laying out lines on the ricasso for my maker's mark. You want it to be nice and square and centered on the ricasso. If you put the stencil in the wrong place or it's not square anymore, the only way to get rid of it after you've etched in your mark is to grind your whole blade thinner. I use some electricity and electrolytes to eat away at the metal under the stencil. This process takes a couple minutes but I end up with a really nice, deep etch. I darken it up with a little brass black just to make it pop. 
Then I get the Ricasso sanded to 1000 grit, revealing a beautiful etch. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to start working on the handle and fittings for this knife. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We're all about making functional art, mostly in the form of custom knives. Also, consider hitting that thumbs up button. It really helps us out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.